Hello, welcome to Something Saturday. So today we are at Stonehenge and I thought you guys might like to see this. So there is the road that we drove down just, oops, over there. And we've got really gorgeous countryside around here. So you can sort of see that. Um, and we'll go back to Stonehenge and I will leave you guys to watch the video. So enjoy and uh, take care, bye. All right, so I'm hoping that I have pre-recorded a little something for you from wherever in the world I was um, while I was working out this video. Um, but this part here I have recorded at home so um, I thought that we would have a go at making a card that has this little um, embossed section in the front of it that you can then see through. So in this case, I put happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you underneath it because I thought it would kind of went with the music and we got little little guy playing his little bongo drums. Um, so that's from the Zoo Crew um, designer series paper. And then these two are just cut out using the beautiful balloons dies. Um, this one here is, you know what, I'll put it onto my blog. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely sure and apparently I forgot to write it down. So anyway, I thought that rather than doing the same thing again, because as people tend to know, if you, you know me well, I don't really like to do the same thing twice if I can avoid it. Um... So I thought today we would use, oh, it's just a sneak peek clip there. Um, thought we would use this. So how amazing is this? It's called Stars at Night. Hopefully you can see it. I can't tell. There we go. Uh, hmm, what am I going to put behind it so you can see it? Oh gosh, didn't think of that. Uh, Stars at Night. So it's a really cool embossing folder that creates these absolutely gorgeous stars and it's really difficult to show you. So we might just have to go ahead. Um, it is a die and embossing folder set. Um, I'm just going to quickly show it to you in the catalogue, which probably would have helped had I actually been organised enough and got the catalogue out first. But I wasn't. <laughs> So there you go. Uh, I'm thinking it is page 15 by the look of that paper. 7, 9, 10, 11. How cute is that? That's one of those ones that I think I might have to get. Uh, 15, here we go. So yes, there is a stamp set as well, um, which I have to admit I didn't get um, because for some reason I decided I didn't need the stamp set. I don't actually know why. That's the stamp set. I kind of figured, yeah, I didn't need it because I thought that the um, the the dies and the embossing folder would actually do the job for me because it actually only cuts out those little pieces and those ones didn't particularly interest me. I do like that for putting behind them, but you know what? I'll live. And if I desperately want it, then I will buy it. I did buy this one, however. I think this is absolutely rather gorgeous. I like the script in it and I like the sayings in it. Um, I didn't buy the die set with it, ironically. Uh, I decided that that die set there was not entirely to my liking. So, But that's the good thing that you don't have to buy everything. I do love this paper and I haven't bought it yet, but I have bought this and it's rather nice and these are rather nice too. Uh, okay, shall we move on? <laughs> now that I've waffled a little. So we're not going to be using the dies today anyway. We're just going to be using the um, um, the embossing folder. There we go. There's the word I'm after. So what I've done, I've actually taken some um, uh, window sheeting, acetate, and I've run it through my embossing folder, as you can see. Voila. There we go, run through. And then I've actually just taken my stays on ink pad and literally just rubbed it like that. And that just gives you 
that interesting effect so that it makes it stand out a little better. So that's how I've created the black look on there. It does have to be stays on because obviously if you use a normal ink pad on acetate, it will just wipe off because it is water soluble. So to create this little window effect on your cards, so we'll just pop that to one side. What I want to do is I actually want to have a piece of um, DSP. So the designer paper that I've chosen, by the way, I just want to say thanks to Rebecca Skur because she actually did something really similar to this on our um, um, on our Creative Connections Day. And, and I absolutely loved it. So I've taken a, hers and, you know, done a bit of a case on it. So, um, so that I could create my own ones of it. So this is the paper that I'm using today, which is called Winter Meadow. And I think it is so pretty. And both sides are really useful sides. You get one side that's kind of plainer. That's just pop that one to one side but how beautiful is it oh hang on don't need to do that because I remember I actually turned it over so there we go oh how cute is that and then on the other side you've got this one and then you've got this and that's what's on the other side of that one as you can see I have been using it already um, but I really love the other side of it oh my goodness that's my color <laughs> Uh, then we've got this one and that's what we're using today because I thought the stars went really nicely with it. Um, there's that one. Oh, sorry, doing it again. And there is this one, which was my other alternative that I was thinking about for today as well, because I thought stars would go well with trees. So there we go. That is the Winter Meadow Designer Series paper, which is so pretty. And we are just going to tuck that back away. In you go. And let's get rid of this one as well. There we go. All right. So because what I want to do is I want to create um, a hole going through pretty much all the paper. So I want it to go through this one and the next layer and the next layer and I know when I cut it with this that it's not going to go through all three layers however I do know that it will go through two layers so what I'm going to do is I'm actually I've started already but I'm actually cutting out a section of the middle so that when I do this it doesn't have to cut this one as well as the next one let's see so I'll just quickly explain to you how I'm cutting the hole so I decided that I wanted about a centimetre all the way round. So I've taken it and I've put myself up to the centimetre mark and then I've cut from one, one centimetre here up to, I think it was about nine centimetres or so. Should have done to maybe, no, it is, it is it does go to 10 centimetres. So yeah, between one and nine. So what? that's what I've cut. Then I've moved it down here. And again, I've put it to the one. And then I've cut between the one and nine. And now it just means that I can put it on the one centimetre mark there. And I can cut down to the one. And then I can cut down to this line here. So I don't need to be concentrating too hard on that. So there we go. I can cut down to that line and down to this line and then that way I've also got another piece of cardstock that I can then use somewhere else as well but it does mean as I say that the thickness is not going to be so bad in the middle of my card as I want to cut it so I am going to arrange this I'm going to use a little bit of my stamping seal. So I don't want to use heaps because I actually don't want it to stick really well. I only want it to stick a little bit so that it just holds in place while I'm doing this. 
half and I do want it to be even so we'll just go there and we'll just pop a little bit into the middle of this and how do I feel about that is that about right that looks pretty good all right so having decided that I didn't need my um, stamping cup and boss machine for this I clearly do partly because I was thinking I was going to have to uh, do the embossing bit so that will now sit there and I want this one hopefully I'll still see some of the trees around it mm, there we go am I happy with that no not quite I feel like it's on a bit of a wonk oh well I'll find out in a minute I'll just go back on itself as well, just because I am cutting through the two layers. Oops. There it is. Good. That worked. Marvellous. I will just say quickly, when you are embossing with a folder like this, because it is a thick embossing folder, um, what you do with your um, machine is you actually take out both of the acrylic plates and this one and then you grab this grey one, the number four plate, and you'll find that when you put it through whee, with this, that will give you exactly the right pressure to run it through. If this wasn't a thick embossing folder, You'd actually want to leave in, wait for it, you'd want to leave this base plate in for a thin embossing folder. And then again, you would use this plate on top and you'd run it through. So I just thought I'd mention that because I sometimes get asked that question about, um, you know, how do I know which configuration to use for my embossing folders? So there you go. Now I have told you. It kind of looks quite good even without the um this bit but we are using this bit so all right i now need to decide let's persuade that off there hopefully all right might need a bit of persuasion with my um thing open here my little lifter tool got its uses. Come on, there we go. Alrighty. So actually, potentially, I could just go ahead and stick that down. Maybe no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going to. <laughs> Gonna be awkward, right? I want my. Pen. So just decide whereabouts this is going to sit. And I have just discovered that I think, oh no, I did use a smaller one. All right, well, I'm going to go with sort of a roundabout. Like this. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can determine um, how I'm going to stick it in, basically. So, looks like it's around about there. And you will find that the acetate doesn't cut terribly well with, um, um, with dyes. That's why I'm actually cutting it by hand like this. I get a little bit fed up when I try and cut it with a die and it doesn't need to be accurate the way that we're doing it it just needs to make sure that it tucks inside and gets hidden underneath everything else so I'm hoping that now that I have that like that it is going to stick down looks good where is my tear and tape because I'm going to use that around the edge of this 
the end gone to again. And a little bit more there. Got to admit I am so cold. <laughs> I would put the heater on in here but I know what a racket it makes and so because of that I'm not putting the heater on. And I can't wait to be in England. <laughs> Or Europe where it's warmer alrighty so there we go and now I can just lay that down straight onto there and stick it onto that we will just add a touch of this onto here and if you end up with it coming off the side just tuck it back over oh, there it is. lovely so we will hopefully be able to put this so that it goes Nicely down like that. There we go. And then we want this one. And this one needs to line up with underneath. Which potentially means that I probably should have used my um, Tombow adhesive because it would be a lot easier to line it up. And I didn't think of doing that. So I'm just going to hope for the best. That's not exactly... Oh, I know what's happened. The one underneath isn't perfect. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Obviously, I didn't manage to get the blue in the right way. Oh, bother. That's a bit of a bummer. Clearly, I should have stuck the two frames together. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Learn from my mistake because that's not a bad thing to do. <laughs> uh, rather than sticking it together in the middle, I recommend that you stick the two frames together and maybe if you need to, just put a little bit of glue into the middle as well just to keep it all in place because obviously now I've stuck my blue one back together and not put it in the right order however that is the general gist of what you're going to create and then potentially you could put some writing underneath there so i might use uh where's it gone to of course it's on the bottom I might use something out of this one uh glory to god in the highest maybe you know, something like that I could put underneath the star. Um, and, you know, potentially, <laughs> so do a little rewind here because obviously this is that this sort of video. I would recommend that you cut your hole, you stamp, and then you put it all together because then you're going to know that your stamp is in the right place. But I didn't do that, so recommend that you do. <laughs> oh, always good intentions. Little bit disappointed that that didn't go quite according to plan, but there you go. All right, well, um, I hope you have enjoyed it, and I hope it inspires you to have a go as well, or potentially buy stuff. That's always good too. Um, and do hop along to my blog and check it out. I will put photos up and I might even redo that one. Thanks so much for joining me. See you next time. Bye.